Hello and welcome to video two for week six. In the previous video, I introduced and did a bunch of examples of parametric curves. Now I want to build up two techniques with parametric curves for understanding better what's going on. The first thing I want to talk about is parameterization. So here is the part of a parabola that can be described by the parametric curve t, t squared for t going from zero to four. That gives me this, this piece of this, of this parabolic shape, um, starting at zero, zero, ending at four, six. Uh, and it has movement along it, and with a squared, I imagine this movement to sort of be accelerating as I go along. So I go through 1, 1, I go through 2, 4, I go through 3, 9, end up at 4, 16. Uh, so t equals 1, t equals 2, t equals 3. Looks like it's sort of accelerating as it goes along, this notion of motion. The idea of parameterization is the idea that this particular shape, without changing the shape at all, I can change my description of motion along the shape by changing the parametric curve. So these four parameterizations all describe that same piece of the parabola. They all have the same relationship. In each case, the y is equal to x squared. So they all describe a piece of the parabola y equals x squared. This is t squared is t squared. t to the 4 is t squared squared. t is the square root of t squared. 25t squared is 5t all squared. So in each case, uh, the y-coordinate is equal to the x-coordinate squared. They satisfy this. So I've got a lie on that shape. And they all end at the point 416. Uh, when t is 4, I get 416. Here, when t is 2, I get 416. Here, when t is 16, I get 416. Here, when t is 4 fifths, I get 416. So they all start at 0, 0. They all end at 416. So they all describe exactly the same shape but they have different rates of movement along it. And this is where the notion of a parametric curve being not just a shape, but the notion of movement along the shape and the rate of movement along a shape. Um, this one takes four, say this is seconds to move along the shape. This one only takes two seconds to move along the shape, goes much faster. This one takes 16 seconds to move along the shape, goes slower. This one only takes four fifths of a second, it's the fastest of all of these, to move along this shape. So you see that we have the same shape, but different notions of movement along that shape. And those are called different parameterizations of the same parametric curve. It's the same shape, but different parameterizations are different notions of movement. I can change the parameterization. This is called reparameterization. So if I have a curve, which is given by some domain of time to output in some Rn, it has components, which I can write as gamma 1 up to gamma n. So it's first components, the second component up to its nth component. And then instead of thinking of this variable t, I can sort of do a change of variables. I think of t as some function depending on u, then all of these t's I can replace with t of u, and that gives me a new curve, or a new description of the same curve. It's still gonna have all the same relationships, it's still gonna describe the same shape, but based on this function, it might have a different rate of movement along that shape. And let me show you what this means by talking about the circle. Here's our conventional circle again, going counterclockwise. Um, if I replace t with 3u, then I get this, which is still a circle, but this is going to go three times as fast around the circle, because the variable u only needs to cover um, 2 pi over 3 to get a full revolution, where this variable t needs to cover 2 pi for a full revolution. If I replace t with u over 3, I get the circle but I'm going to go one-third as fast, so going quite a bit more slowly. And in order to do 2 pi here, you would have to be 6 pi, so I only get a full revolution after 6 pi units of time. If I replace t with u squared, I get an accelerated movement around the circle, so it's going to start slower, and then it's going to get faster and faster as this squared term grows quicker and quicker. If I replace t with the square root of u, it'll be the opposite. It'll start fast, and that it'll slow down and go slower and slower, as the square root means that it takes longer and longer to do a whole uh, revolution from 2 pi to 4 pi, from 4 pi to 6 pi. So all of these replacements don't change the shape, but they change the rate of movement around the shape. And that's really what reparameterization is doing. The other thing I want to talk about in this video is arc length. So we have a curve, it's really nice to know how far the curve goes, especially if we're doing motion, it's like nice to know how much distance we have covered when we're talking about motion. And that's a difficult thing to figure out. We don't have uh, ne necessarily easy tools for calculating the length of curves objects. 
what we're going to do here is we're going to do something like the Riemann integral of set up an approximation process. So I'm going to take my curve and divide it up into pieces and on each piece I'm going to approximate the curve by a straight line. And then on each straight line I can calculate the length of the straight line by Pythagoras using the difference in the change in x and change in y so the length of this is going to be delta x squared plus delta y squared all square root. So that's going to give me a bunch of lengths of all of these little pieces. So here length of each segment is that Pythagorean combination. So the length of the curve is approximated by the sums of those approximations. And then I take a limit as the number of approximations goes to infinity, just like I did with rectangles in the Riemann integral. And I get that the length is exactly the integral of dx squared plus dy squared all square root from a to b. That's not necessarily in a form I can calculate, but if I sort of do a change of variables with x depending on t and y depending on t, then I get this. And this is the thing I actually can calculate that the length is going to be the square root of the derivative of the first component squared plus the derivative of the second component squared. Integrate that over the t domain from the starting value of t to the ending value of t. And that's in R2, but I can do this in any dimension I want. And it just means the Pythagorean combination has more terms in it, the first term, the second term, the third term, all the way up to the nth term. All right, what does that actually look like? Let's do it in R3. So here's a helix in R3. So this is going around in a circle and increasing. So we get this helix shape like this, um, and it's going from zero to uh, eight pi. So this is four evolutions of this helix. So the formula tells me the length is the integral over the range of t, so zero to eight pi, the derivative of the first component, the derivative of the second component, the derivative of the third component. I s take each derivative and square it, put them in here. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Negative sine squared is sine squared. Derivative of sine is cosine, so I get cosine squared. Derivative of t is one, so I get one squared is one. Then I take advantage of the fact that sine squared plus cos squared is one, so I get one plus one, I get root two. Uh, integrating a constant, I just get t, t from zero to eight pi is gonna be eight pi times root two, so eight root two pi. So the length from one revolution, two, three, four, from here to here in this particular helix is going to be exactly 8 root 2 pi units of distance covered over 8 pi units of time. Let me do one more example. Here's an interesting curve. This is called the asteroid. It uh, starts and ends at uh, 1, 0 like the circle does, but these cubes here, instead of having the arc out of the circle, these give us sort of a strange arcing inward shape for this shape called the asteroid. So what is its uh, arc length for one revolution? So I need to calculate the derivatives of each of these two things. So I need the derivative of this, this chain rule derivative. Uh, the derivative of the inside is sine, derivative of the outside is negative three cos squared. Here, derivative of the inside is cosine, derivative of the outside is three sine squared. I need to square both those derivatives. That's what I need to do for these pieces. So I square that to get this, square that to get this. Uh, and then I can do a little bit of algebra here. There is a nine cos squared sine squared uh, t, t common here and here. I can factor that out. And this thing is all squares. Nine is three squared cos squared sine squared. So I can take it out, but if I take it out of a square root, I need an absolute value. And what's left over is there's a cos to the fourth here, so the cos squared there, a sine to the fourth here, so a sine squared there. What's left over is sine squared plus cos squared, which is conveniently one. Um, so that was the last step that I had. This thing is conveniently one, so it goes away. So I just get the integral dt from zero to two pi of three sine t cos t. And this is a bit tricky because I've got this absolute value here. And that in fact relates to the fact that this asteroid shape is non-differentiable at its sharp corners. So there's sort of some weird kind of changes, but I can make a symmetry argument. And when working with geometry and parametric curves, symmetry arguments are really, really good. This shape is exactly the same here, 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 here. They're just rotated around. So this is the same as four times the first section. So the arc length will just be four times the first section. And in the first section from zero to two pi, these are both already positive. So I can just drop the square root. Uh, then I can do a bit of a change because uh, this sine t cos t 
is same as sine 2t over 2. Uh, I take the 3 out, I get 12. Divide by the 2 here, I get 6. So I can integrate sine 2t. Uh, do that integral. I won't go over the details. Uh, integral of cos 2t from 0 to pi over 2 multiplied by negative 3. It's going to give you this 6. So that the length of this shape is in fact exactly 6 units as time goes from 0 to 2 pi.